the brave little tailor. <laughs> I I do wonder if perhaps this is where Tolkien took some of the ideas for The Hobbit from. He says, stay with me, um, there are giants fighting giants coming up. There was once a tailor who was sitting in his workshop, sewing away, when he heard coming through the open window the cries of a woman selling jam. He thought, that sounds good. So he called out of the window to the jam seller, and she climbed up three flights of stairs with her heavy basket, and was a little disappointed when the tailor bought only one jar of jam. So she grumbled her way back down the stairs. But as, as the tailor spread the jam on his midday bread, flies gathered on the sweetness. And he thought, that's terrible. So he took his hand and he swatted the flies. And he killed seven of them with one blow. And he thought, what a fine fellow I am. I have killed seven with one blow. So that afternoon he sat and he made himself a new belt and he stitched onto it the words seven with one blow. And then the next day he thought, I can do better than being a tailor and simply sitting here sewing away. I think I should go out into the wide world and tell everyone that I killed seven with one blow. So the tailor looked in his house for some food to take with him, but all he could find was a cheese. So he put the cheese in his pocket, put on his coat, walked out of the door and began a great adventure. Because, of course, walking out of your, door, walking out of your front door can be a very dangerous thing to do. As he was walking along, he found a bird that was trapped in a bush. So he gently released the bird and put it in his pocket. And as he was walking along, he walked through a forest. And there was a giant, for in those days there were still giants living in Germany, and they did tend to live in forests. So the brave little tailor fell into conversation with the giant, who said, you're a scrawny little specimen. And the tailor said, I can kill seven with one blow. And the giant looked at the little man and really didn't believe him. So the giant took a stone and squeezed it until water came out of the stone. And the giant said, can you do this too? And the tailor took the soft cheese out of his pocket and squeezed it until the whole cheese just turned to liquid and the liquid from the cheese just flowed down onto the ground and the giant was secretly quite impressed but he said how far can you throw a stone little man watch this so the giant picked up a stone and threw it right up into the air and the tailor said, that's very clever, but you know, your stone will come down eventually. Watch what I can do. So he took the bird out of his pocket, threw it, and the bird flew off and was never seen again. So the giant was becoming quite impressed by this time. But he said to the little tailor, can you carry a tree? And the little tailor kind of shrugged his shoulders. But there, on the ground, was an oak tree which had come down in a storm. And so the giant picked up the trunk, put it on his shoulder and began to drag the tree. And the tailor said, you take the trunk, I'll carry the branches. So the little tailor climbed up onto the branches. And while the giant was dragging the heavy tree along... The tailor was having quite a nice time sitting in the branches and to pass the time he even began singing to himself. 
So after some time, the giant grew weary and placed the trunk down on the ground. And as quick as you like, the tailor climbed down the branches so he was standing on the ground as the giant turned round. And the giant said, come and spend the evening with me and my brothers. So there they were, the giant's brothers, sitting around the fire, eating a whole sheep each. And later, they all went to sleep in a great cave. And the tailor looked round and thought, well, this is very spacious and roomy. This is better than my workshop at home. And the giants gave him an empty bed. But the tailor looked at it and thought, that's far too big for me. So he simply crawled into a corner and slept there all warm and cosy. So in the middle of the night, one of the giants got up, took a great iron bar and brought it down on the tailor's bed and thought, that's the end of that little shrimp. But the tailor, who was used to getting up early, simply awoke at dawn, left the cave and walked through the forest whistling away. So when the giants awoke and went out into the forest, they found the little man simply wandering along the path, whistling a tune to himself. So the giants turned round and ran away from him, thinking a man who can survive being beaten with the heavy iron bar would really be able to kill any of us. So, after another few days, the little tailor arrived in a town. And there he found his way to the king's palace. And being tired and weary by this stage, he lay down on the grass and fell asleep. So it was there that the king's guard found him. And being soldiers, they were very impressed by the writing on his belt, seven with one blow. So they took the little tailor to the captain of the king's guard and said, this man can kill seven with one blow. He must be a great hero from the wars, we think. He should join the palace guard so that he will be there, needed if ever war breaks out. So the little tailor became a member of the palace guard and word that there was a man in the palace guard who could kill seven with one blow reached the king. And the king said, if you are as strong as you say you are, perhaps you would be a good husband for my daughter. I think first you should prove yourself. There are two giants in the forest who fight each other. They're causing a lot of noise, a lot of disturbance, and they're uprooting a lot of trees. If you can kill seven with one blow... <coughs> Take a hundred of my best knights, go to the forest, and kill both the giants. So the little tailor said, I don't need your hundred knights, I can do this alone. So the tailor set off for the forest, left the hundred knights outside the woodland on the edge, and journeyed deep within the wood until he found the two giants asleep under a tree. Now the tailor had filled his pockets with stones and being a slight and nimble man he climbed up the tree and took the stones out of his pockets and dropped the stones first on one giant and then on the other. And the giants awoke and one giant said to his brother why why are you why are you attacking me with stones and his brother said i'm i'm not attacking you i think you're attacking me and to the tie two giants got up and began to fight and they fought 
and they fought. And after some time, they both fell down. And the tailor, who had watched all this, drew his sword and simply cut both the giants so their blood fell onto the earth. And he went to the edge of the forest where he had left the knight and said, Job done. Come and see the giants. And so the knights, who really didn't believe that the little tailor had managed to kill both the giants, followed him through the forest track and were really amazed when they saw both the giants laying there on the ground in pools of their own blood. So the king looked at the little tailor and said, if you are to marry my daughter, I think there is another test which I would like you to undertake. And the tailor said, tell me, what is it you think that I cannot perform? And the king said, there is a unicorn loose in the forest. And it causes a great deal of damage. Go and catch it. So, as you know and I know and everyone else knows, unicorns are most active on a full moon. So on the next full moonlit night, the tailor went into the forest, carrying with him a rope and an axe. And the unicorn smells the strange smell of human. And the tailor stood in front of a tree. Now the unicorn lowered its head and began to run towards the tree, towards the little tailor, ready to impale him with her fierce horn. And the tailor, being a nimble man, simply stepped to one side. So the unicorn ran full pelt into the tree and impaled her horn in the wood. So she was stuck. So the little tailor simply placed the rope around her neck, took the axe, used it to cut the horn, and led the unicorn back to the palace where he presented it as a gift to the king. Hmm. This fierce warrior who can kill seven with one blow He's killed the giants. He's killed a unicorn. I think I can make another test for him. There is a wild boar ravaging the forest. Take my hundred knights. Go and deal with the fierce wild boar. So the little tailor once again said he didn't need the help of the hundred knights. Neither did he need the boar spear. A little tailor simply walked through the forest until he found an abandoned chapel. And he waited there by the chapel until the boar found him. And as the boar ran towards him. Boars have very bad eyesight, by the way. They rely a lot on smell. Um, as the boar ran towards him, the little tailor simply rushed into the chapel. And the boar followed him inside. And the tailor, quick as you like, climbed out of a window, ran round the outside of the chapel and closed the heavy wooden door. So the wild boar was trapped inside and all that was left was to find the hundred knights and say, I'm sure you can manage to dispatch the boar now that I have trapped it in the chapel. And of course, the giant, the knights, were hugely impressed. 
There was nothing left for the king to do but agree to let the little tailor marry his daughter and to give him half the kingdom. So the princess married the tailor, although there was little joy at their wedding. And after a few weeks of married life, the young queen lying in the bed heard her husband saying in his sleep, boy, f finish sewing that jerkin and, and, and mend those trousers or I will hit you with my yardstick. Now the queen was a little confused by these words and she went and reported them to her father, the old king, who said, I thought as much. He's not a great warrior. He's not a great hero from the wars. He's really a tailor. I will send some of my soldiers. They will wait outside your bedroom door. Leave it unlocked. They will go in at night. They will tie up your husband. Put him on a ship and send him far, far away. Now, the armour bearer had grown to respect the little tailor who was now king. And so he told the king, his lord, what the old king planned to do. So when the knight arrived, when the soldiers were due to tie up the new king, the little tailor, and put him on a ship, he just pretended to be asleep and lay there in bed saying, Boy, finish sewing that jerkin, mend those trousers, and don't forget, I have killed seven with one blow. I have killed two giants. I have trapped a unicorn. I have dispatched a wild boar. I'm not going to be afraid of those soldiers who are standing outside the door. And the soldiers heard all this and they looked at each other and thought, the king is a giant killer. The king trapped the unicorn. The king dealt with the wild boar. And they were very much afraid of the little tailor who was now king. So they didn't bind him and they didn't put him on a ship. They simply came up with some excuse to the old king as to why they hadn't done this to, after all, this mighty hero. So after some time, the queen developed some affection for her husband. And the two of them reigned over the kingdom for a long and happy time. The great line um, in a Terry Pratchett novel, a lie can travel round the world before the truth has got its boots on. I kind of like that whole thing about tricking giants and, and getting them to fight each other. And of course, um, Tolkien uses this with the trolls in The Hobbit. I rather like that. There you are. Cunning will always outwit strength. So, whoever you are listening to this, I hope you have a little cunning in your life too. Um, look forward to seeing you again. More stories coming up, so don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you again soon.